If you're into astrophotography, you likely know about diffraction spikes, but in the case you don't, you know with Newtonian telescopes where there's a spider holding a secondary mirror, those spider veins diffract light and cause what's called diffraction spikes. And if you talk to typical astrophotographers, just everybody you see, you'll find that people are, are kind of on the fence with that. Some people call it interference. The Hubble Space Telescope, for example, has diffraction spikes. So the best imager we have at the moment currently has diffraction spikes in our images. And that's the spikes that are coming up off the stars. Refractors don't do that because just like a camera lens, there's no obstruction in the optics. But a camera lens, as you stop it down, depending on how many aperture blades you have, is going to be the kind of diffraction spikes you get in the image. And that may not be appealing to you. There's a solution to that. The trouble with the lens is that most of them like this Takamar or uh, my 50 millimeter f1.8 that I have on my camera. Very few of them are, are optically perfect, wide open, meaning that even though this is a 1.8 and it's really fast, I need to stop it down. I'd say with this lens around 3.5 to get really sharp stars with less aberrations. Uh, 5.6 takes it, you know, it's just about perfect at that point, but you generally have to stop a lens down to avoid the type of lens aberrations that will affect your photo. But by doing that, you're introducing the effect of diffraction that you get from your aperture blades. You see that? There's a way around that. I can take this lens and shoot it wide open, but I can use this product that I'm about to show you. And what it is, is camera stepping rings. And these are designed primarily with the idea of, say you own a 58 millimeter filter, but you own a bunch of different camera lenses and all of the filter sizes for the different lenses are different. This will allow you to step up to or down to the filter size that you have. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on filters. You can, you can use these rings in combination with your lenses to use one filter for all of them. But they serve another purpose in astrophotography. And that is that I can take the 58 millimeter side of this and say with this Takamar 200 millimeter, I can screw it into the front, ever how many rings I want, I can take this one out if I want, and effectively stop the lens down without creating the diffraction spikes that occur from the different amount of blades on your aperture blades. So I can maintain round stars and I can do that relatively cheap because this whole set right here from K&F is only $15. So for general purpose photography, it's going to save you money in the sense that you'll be able to use one filter that you may own or two with various different lenses. But for astrophotography, it's also going to allow you to stop the lens down circularly rather than what's inherent with your aperture blades which creates a diffraction spike so if you truly hate diffraction spikes this is your way around it and it's a cheap way like i said this is 15 dollars i got the k and f concept because i like the company everything i've bought from them has, has worked really well i had no trouble with these threads this is all metal construction here and this will allow me to do exactly as I'm saying. You can basically emulate an apochromatic telescope with a lens because you can maintain round stars even with the 
the lens itself stop down by limiting the amount of light that passes through here I'm reducing the amount of aberrations in the image and thereby improving it so I wanted to show you guys that and uh, that's a really cool old school trick something you may not be familiar with these are just handy all around so something maybe you might consider putting in your bag thanks a lot hope you have plenty of clear skies.